All right, we have the I doing right here. All right, for this one right here. Yes. All right, we have the I doing right here. Awesome car. We also have today, it's the Toyota. What car is this again? <laughs> Toyota. Highlander, what year? 14 looking all good check this out so we got the new head unit coming from i doing we already did the unboxing making sure everything looks good but woo, wait look how the difference in the screen you can definitely tell uh this one like looks like a nintendo ds it looks like uh like it's not like an iphone kind of touch screen it's just like one of those old school um you know what i'm talking about it it, it feels plasticky this one's actually glass but it has a little screen protector on it right now, but man, the difference is staggering. So today we're gonna be doing an install on the 2014 Highlander. I really like this car, it's still modern, still nice. Um, the owner uh, right there wants to get Apple CarPlay going and wants to make sure like everything looks good. So we're gonna do that today, check it out. All right, so I already have it pre-loosened, but what I used is like, I used this tool right here, guys and i started right here and i pried it at the very corner um once it's pried at the corner i'm able to pull it um so i pulled it here pulled it here and sometimes you get, need a little bit more leverage so i have this plastic pry tool and i hit it at this angle right here it's it's all held by clips so i'll show you these clips that gave me the most trouble this very corner it's just a straight clip so when you're pulling it try to pull it towards you um, don't try to pull at an angle or anything but yeah pulling towards you it is the way to go after that you're gonna have to unplug these harnesses right here this is for the climate control the reason why we're doing this is just so we have more leverage and um, when we're moving this out and just more space so you just you should be able to just push this clip right here and pull it out same with this, push this clip out, and pull it out. All right, for this one right here, you wanna, there's this little pull tab at the very bottom, and you just wanna push it towards the, the car. So push it down, and then the, the whole thing will come off. So now your climate control, your hazard switch, everything's good to go. This is actually not a plug, apparently. It's just uh, a holder, like a, just to tidy up the cords. So let's get that out of the way. And now after that, you're gonna reveal these 10 millimeters and we're gonna to have to unscrew these 10. So let me get the 10 mil. All right, so we're gonna remove these 10. I'm just using this here, but you can just use a regular ratchet. Now um, put this in the cup holder. Hmm. Uh, that way you don't lose it. So we've got the bottom part. Now we gotta hit the top part after you get these two down. So you're not, shouldn't be able to pull it out. And I'll show you how to remove um, the top. All right, so for this trim piece right here, you can just pop it out by just pulling it. Now, the reason why we're doing that is we're trying to get access to, we're trying to pop this uh, this vent out, and you, you don't have to really take this whole thing out if you want. Um, you, it just pulls out, it's just being held by clips, and that just gives us access to pop these, these vents out. Boom, vent is out. How awesome is that? Um, very modular. And then you wanna pop this vent out too. Now it's being held by clips. It's stuck a little bit. All right, so to remove this, it also just pulls out. I use this little clip tool and I hit it from here. Uh, I use this to kind of like pry it. And you can see it, if that's gonna help you pry the thing. Um, now what that does is it reveals the 10 mil right here and then it removes the 10 mil on the other side. And that should be enough to remove the whole head unit. And we can put the new one in. And that's gonna be the hardest part. Now, my tool does fit in here. Boom. A 10, and then hit this one. Make sure you don't drop it into the abyss. <laughs> happens all the time and now I should be able to just pull the head unit boom it's usually always held by four now there's gonna be a bunch of wires in the back and we're gonna unplug all of them one two now this thing's heavy oh I don't know why it's so heavy but it is 
the Android one isn't as heavy. So there is going to be some weight reduction. You know, your car's going to be a little bit faster. Shave a few pounds. Wow, this thing has so many plugs. A lot of plugs, which... Which is interesting. I know you guys can't see, but I'm just unplugging it. You just try to pry it. Uh, each plug is a little bit different. You want to... Like, like the AC control unit, you just want to press the tab and pull. And that's what I'm doing right now. Whew. There are a hundred thousand plugs on this. This is probably the most plugs I've ever seen on a head unit. Ever. <laughs> this is crazy. Oh, these are connected. What the hell? I guess you don't have to unplug these. So, yeah, these are these don't need to be unplugged because they're literally already plugged in to each other. If that will save you guys some time. There you go. These plugs are already plugged together. All right. So keep that safe just in case you need to go back to stock. Um... I'll put it back here. And now we're gonna fit the new head unit into here. Now iDoing does have all of these um, nice, iDoing is the only company that does this where it has the ports, the main ports already built in, which is super nice. We're gonna be able to plug it in here. So match it like Legos. There's the 28 pin. This one is gonna be a radio, which um, there's an adapter for, so let's not worry about that. Here's the main wires right here. This is the 10 pin, so if you count them, you're gonna count 10 pins. Let me zoom in. Oh, that's a max zoom in. You wanna plug that into this bad boy too, which is at the very bottom. This is the eight pin, which goes right below it, or right next to it, side by side. So we plugged in three plugs so far in, the, the 10 pin, the eight pin, and then the 28 pin. This is for your USB. So we'll check out the adapters later. And then this one doesn't fit into anything here. Now looking at this, this looks like it's, it's the aux cord or the reverse camera. I'm gonna to have to look into more detail with that. But the bag also has more wires. This is not all the plugs. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is uh, we have another baggie. This one also has the pride tools and a microphone. And you're gonna have a little bit more harnesses here. And we're just gonna plug this bad boy in to the right spot. Let's plug it in. I'm plugging in, uh, it will show you a diagram on where to plug it in. And this one's not to tell you to plug this on the port, not on the back of the head unit. So it's really nice they have that. And now I'll be able to connect this bad boy right here, hopefully. Boom, so I'll be able to hook up to that. And now, so this is pretty much almost all the wires are covered um, besides these antennas. So this is for XM radios. Now we're not going to use XM radios anymore, so unfortunately we're not going to retain that. And then this one's for FM, which we, we can retain. I will show you the adapter. So here's the adapter for the FM. It's orange and black. And we're going to plug that bad boy right in here. So it looks something like that. And now you can plug it into the back of the head unit, uh, which is right here. So we're almost plugging everything's almost plugged in uh, that was originally plugged into the old unit uh, this was the AC control so we don't need that and these are the wires now there's one thing that we haven't plugged in yet either it's gonna be this gray one right here this one is your 
USB, which I doing actually provides a adapter. So you'll be able to use your USB, which is either under here or under your center. You're gonna be able to use the stock location USB, which is great. Plug that in. And then this end, we're gonna to have to put an adapter in, which I'll show you how to do that. And now this is like the brains to communicate with Toyota. And that is gonna go right here, right next to this iDoing sticker. Boom. So we got that plugged in. Now we do have an extra one. Now this might have the backup camera and stuff like that, uh, or not. It's just redundancy because Toyota does change it over the years, which is great that they have that uh, area covered. Now I, I want to plug in the USBs, and I'll show you guys how to do that. So this huge bag with stuff right now, I need to plug that in. So this is a reverse camera, which I'm going to plug in as well. And it also has a little sticker, which is great. So I'm going to plug that in, and it also has your Wi-Fi antenna too. So it's, this is going to be on the very bottom left by the FM AM radio antenna, I believe. Boom. And then you want you see this orange wire right here? You want to use that orange wire to hook up with that FM radio so then you have a stronger boost signal. If you don't plug this in, it'll still work, but your radio signal will be weaker. So you want to have this orange wire plugged in right there. Let me see if we can move a little bit down so you guys can see a little bit more of the wiring. So we have that plugged in and we have keys and stuff like that, which we don't have to worry about right now. Reverse signal, amp controls, there's some additional stuff that we don't need to worry about right now. I just need to get the FM, uh, not the FM, a USB so we can test out the USB. So that USB one that comes, the adapter with the green tip with the gray one right there plug it into the type a plug yeah make sure it's the right way because you know with usbs the old school ones it's only a one one it only goes in one way i'm going to use this purple wire right here to plug in this is a four pin and there's a four pin right here so i'm gonna pan over real quick and i'll show you guys the wiring that i have initially so everything's plugged in um, let me just go over real quick because it is a little, a little confusing. 10 pin, 6 pin, 28 pin. I have this black wire hanging from the, this back and it's going into this other harness. I don't know how many pins that one is. And that pretty much covers everything. Um, this one's the USB, this gray to green, this wire that I'm holding right here and I'm shaking around. That is for your radio. This is your CAN bus, so it talks about, it gives you basically car information, you want to have that. Antenna, and stuff like that is plugged into this corner. USBs, and then the FM, AM radio. Um, these are GPS antennas in the 4Gs. I'm not going to have this installed right now because I just want to make sure the head unit works before I add everything. So, let's, let's kind of get this oriented in a nice fashion where it sits, it's probably gonna, it's gonna sit right here. Whoa, the screen's so much bigger. Um, just kind of fish it back there. Make sure everything's fit. We don't even know if it fits properly yet because uh, it looks like it does. And then the, we're gonna have it uh, like something like this. So we're just gonna have it loosely placed in just to give you an idea on the, the, the fitment right there goes up top looks like it's gonna be flush which is great news for us so something like that okay I am not pushing it in because I'm still installing it now we have the keys and we, ho we hope everything works boom so the car uh, the clock everything works right now and the head unit is on okay so the reverse camera is working. We don't have to do anything extra. We just turn the car on and we put it in reverse. It is in reverse. I just want to show you guys that you can put it in park again. We were, um, and it will automatically go back to your car, car play. 
So this, when you throw it in reverse, it triggers a signal and then it will immediately uh, show it on the very top. So even if your car, like, as soon as you start your car, you can throw it in reverse and you'll see your reverse camera. Um, can you throw it in reverse and like move the steering wheel and stuff? Does it show, okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't move with the, um, the lines, but the lines are, at least you have the camera right there with like extra lines. Uh, some cars will have the trajectory show depending on the steering wheel input. But um, yeah, that's just what we wanted to show right there. Great, things look good. Um, it is blown up, so it's a bigger picture. I think the quality is okay. I don't know how the, how the quality is normally is. But uh, from my experience, the quality just looks okay. Um, but it is on the bigger screen, so it's a little bit easier to see. Fair enough. Or do you, I mean, you use a reverse camera. What do you, what do you think about the, the quality? Uh, I don't know. It looks okay, like you said. Yeah. Nothing yeah. amazing. It looks kind of like a webcam quality on yeah. a, like an older laptop. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is on a 2014, 2015. So, uh, yeah. Cool. All right. So we did the effort, uh, initial, like, does it work? And everything works when it comes on the sound and everything. So we're going to finish the install and I'll just go through all these wires. This right here, I'm not going to uh, plug it in, but it is for 4G. This is where you can put a SIM card. Now you could just put it in there. Do you want me to just plug it in or you just want to leave it out? You, you, you pretty much put a SIM card right here. The reason why I, I leave it out is because I just it's not going to be used and it'll just take space back there. Yeah, I don't think my mom's going to use it. Yeah, so, and you have to go to the back of the head unit and then put a SIM card in it anyways. These ones are USBs, which I am going to use. I'm going to try to route these USBs either under here so I can go to the glove box. So I'll, I'll show you guys how to do that. This is a 4G antenna. You could use your, your cell phone's uh, SIM card to test that out. Um, we're not using 4G, so I'm just going to keep that in a plastic bag. So if And it's going to go with the head unit. So if, the, if he ever sells the head unit or whatever, he can just say, hey, look, this, is, this stuff is brand new. This is a antenna for the GPS, which we are going to use. So I'm going to show you guys how to open, just open the bag. So you're saying GPS. What do you mean like GPS? So think of it like a TomTom. TomToms have a GPS. They don't use cellular data. So it's called like offline, but it's connected to the satellites. Now, the car actually has a built-in GPS um, like um, maps, but it's not as good as Apple Maps, Waze, or CarPlay, or, or Google Maps. So... Um, you generally don't want to need to use it, but I the reason why I install it is maybe your phone's dead or you lost your phone and you're lost So you want to use this as like a last resort use the GPS on your car navigation system makes sense So right there and it's, it's just held by a magnet and I just put it right there some people put it on the very top, but honestly it looks pretty ugly and uh, uh, It's harder to install so if you want to do that you can do that But I usually just put it here and I generally get signal um, below right there, too. So I like things to be reversible and very easy to install uh, later on. So here's the USBs. I'm gonna plug it into the USB here. Let's see. And all this stuff is labeled on the bottom too. If you want, you're like, so which one is the USBs? You can check the bottom of the head unit. It will show a wiring diagram, which is nice. So check this out. There's wire diagrams, yarns, but for, for me, I, I know where because I just look and then I just plug it in. Hopefully. <laughs> this is a four pin. Yeah, it should fit here. Plugged it in. Now we have extra USBs. So we already have a USB coming through here, but um, is it cool if I open this? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Might so, be a mess though, but. Oh, is it? It's a lot. So we're gonna uh, try to fish it here. So if he ever needs more USBs or this USB doesn't work, let's see if I can. Oh, it's actually fully blocked off. Uh. It's fully enclosed. So um, I'll be able to wire it. So we're gonna fish it through and uh, have it at the very bottom. But um, I can't really show that because it's actually really tight right now. But yeah, we'll have that as an option if he wanted. If you don't want the USBs right there. Uh, we'll find a different solution okay and then let's go through the other wires here so we went through all the wires um, for that the, the rest of the wires are these ones right here so we do have a Wi-Fi one so 
Um, this one actually has the Wi-Fi antenna. The other one had uh, amp controls and reverse. So you want to plug this blue one in. That way you'll have a better Wi-Fi signal. If you have a better Wi-Fi signal, that means you're going to have a better CarPlay uh, wireless solution too. So that's plugged in. It's just using a wire. This microphone, again, we're not going to use. The last wire that we, we are talking about is this one right here. This one is if you want to have a subwoofer or you want to use RCA jacks out. So you have a subwoofer right there. Check that out. You got some other stuff. And we're not going to use that aux too. Right there, we're not going to use that. You, um, you can plug it in. But again, I, I try to keep the setup as clean as possible. You look at it right now in order, it looks like a rat's nest. So you don't want to like add to that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. We have everything plugged in. Now we have to do everything in reverse. And um, I'll show you the finished product. Put the USBs right here. Circled around. Now time to put in the head unit. So with this head unit right here, um, it's using clips from these right like right here so sometimes you have to transfer it to the old this is the old one so you see this yellow clip right here the the new one doesn't have that it just has the black part so you want to transfer it over so slowly put it like this and then it comes out and you want to put it right here it just goes in the same spot so that way it will actually latch on pretty tight same with this right here now some people ask do, do we reuse these mounting holes um, generally you can't use the mounting so the 10 mils and stuff like that we're not going to reuse now I'm taking this part out but if you want to have it really secured you could you could find a way it's just, this is just like a double dent setup and uh, yeah we just don't use that all right, so old head unit, thing heavy. <laughs> Put it back there, and now we have this. So we're just gonna slide it back in, kind of tuck it. It's actually a pretty clean install because I don't have to use any electric tape or nothing like that, which is just great. It's just great. And um, have to get it in the spot. And then look at those clips. And it's gonna be like held like that. And there is some pressure, so let's see if we can get it locked into the spot without much fuss. So let's pop it out a little bit. Now we're gonna put these vents in. Now, it does look really good. Um, the fitment is, I would say like 99% there. It's, I didn't, I don't remember how the OEM one looked and I'm not sure if the OEM was 100% either, but um, the, for an aftermarket head unit, I don't think you can complain. <laughs> like that looks pretty good. And then we gotta plug this in right here as the last piece. This is just a, like a zip tie. So let's just put that in. And then you have the actual wire itself that controls the AC unit. Now we're in a, this basically looks like a 2022 20, Highlander. It's a massive screen. And uh, it still has a little zing. And if the if mama wants to take that out, then you can. But you know, my parents we put we put plastic wrapper on our remote controls. <laughs> I didn't even notice that. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll we'll leave it there just in case. But uh, yeah, let's let's start it up. Make sure everything works. We got the AC working great. This is going, so it basically goes to the last menu we're working on, and we're working on the serial controls. That's the wrong date. <laughs> I'll change it later. Yeah. Cool. So that's it.
Thank you guys for watching. If you guys were interested in the Toyota Highlander 2014 too, I'm not sure the range, I'll put it in the description. Um, really happy with this install. It was very easy and um, yeah, I actually enjoyed it. It was, kind of, it was a lot of fun. And this is more, out of all the installs I've done, this was probably on the easier side of it. So if you guys don't, it's not very intimidating is what I'm trying to say. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.